Good evening, my dear brothers, sisters, and friends. I'm very happy to see you back after a long summer break. And even though we come back, I think uh, last week, I still haven't had a chance to meet you on the first day we are regarding. Today is Friday, September the uh, 4th, 2015. <clears throat> How was your summer? Did you enjoy your summer so far? This year quite uh, dry. So it's nice to have a cloudy and a little bit of rain, a little bit of cold. So every, everybody can enjoy the freshness. Brothers and sisters, friends, within uh, a month during the uh, summer break, but uh, myself and many monastics, we do not, uh, we are not really have any break. There were a lot of uh, retreats, activities, ceremonies, and uh, funerals to attend. Within a month, I uh, attend uh, the service a funeral service for about five or six uh, people with uh, different ages. The youngest is only 21. And the oldest that I attend uh, two days ago is uh, 93 years old. And today I attend a funeral service for a 52 years old lady. And earlier uh, this afternoon, I uh, went to the hospital to uh, bless and make a short prayer for a man with uh, 86 years old. So if you go to the back and you know you you haven't come to the temple for maybe a few weeks and you see many new pictures on the ancestor altar. I remember one day I attend a funeral for a 28 years old boy, man, 28 years old man in uh, Calgary. And I uh, turn around to um, his uncle and I told him that uh, you lost your, your grandmother 10 days ago and now you continue to lose another person in your family member, and that is your nephew. This family, they lost two persons within two weeks, only 10, 11 days. And I also attend, uh, I went to the hospital to visit one of our sister here, who was ill in the hospital. Every time when I see these things, I remember one sutra that taught by the Buddha about losing. And the Buddha mentioned that uh, there are few things that we lose in our daily life. We may lose our wealth. We may lose our relatives, we may lose our health, we may lose our learning, and we also may lose our morals. And the Buddha's conclusion, compared to the four losings, wealth, health, relatives, learning, and the most important and major and danger, losing and losing our morals. Because when the morality is no longer practiced, the society will be very danger, and a lot of, uh, lot of suffering will happen, 
lots of uh, crimes may be happen in the society. If we reflect deeply and we see that in our daily life, of course, we, if we have born as a human, then we're supposed to have parents, family, relatives. None of us say, I don't have any relatives. At least we have one. So that means we have to live in such a way to keep, to keep the love between one another. Of course, we may lose them one day, but we rather than it lose naturally, like that person passed away. But we try not to live in such a way that we cannot see each other when we're still alive. That means we are against each other. We hate each other. We cannot talk to each other. And that is kind of hurt. That's a kind of sadness. Because we do not know how to practice in order to keep the relationship between us and our relatives. We don't know why when we first meet we fall in love with each other. And then uh, one day we are no longer have any feelings for each other. Then we're willing to turn around and hurt that person badly. And that is not the practice. And that is not what we call the morals, the morality. If the one who have the morality, we, they will be honest to tell that person, I no longer have any feeling for you. So I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to continue to hurt you. So if we cannot, we still, we cannot become husband and wife, then we can become good friends. There's nothing to hurt each other. The relationship between husband and wife is based on the conditions. If we have no, no longer, no more conditions, to be together, then we will have to find a better condition to solve the problem. Do not try to ruin the conditions, the good conditions, because that will, that will make a very, very uh, firm hurting and scoff in that person's heart. If we lose money, we may find money again. But if we lose the relationship between us and the other, it's hard to refine. I think about um, a week ago, I was attending uh, a, a special ceremony in one of the uh, temples in Calgary. And there was a lady who came to me and, and, and asked me a question, Thai. How can I forgive my, my husband? Because uh, he, he's so kind. He lent his friends, borrowed the money, and now his friend did not return. And every time when I look at my husband, I think about the amount that we lose, that we lost, and I'm really angry. So I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to see him. I tap on her shoulder and I said, when you come here as a, a, an immigrant from a refugee camp, you have bare hands and you spend years to raise money and now you have nothing and that is something you can learn from. And remember, mater materialistics, money, if we lose, we can fight again. And if because of the money and the relationship between you and husband also lose, and that is not right. How can we make the money affect the relationship of husband and wife? Try to think again about this matter. 
And I think uh, she has uh, received my message. And you know, in this, in this, uh, in this uh, life, every day we must spend some money. <laughs> or you don't spend today, or at least you have to spend money once a week. You don't spend money once a week, at least you have to spend for sure at least once a month for your bills. So every day we're spending. And because we are spending, that's why we were receiving. And I told her, the money that you lend to your friends and now they disappear. You think it's gone, but I'm guaranteed it's not going anywhere, it stay there, invisible. And because you have gem, your, your husband is uh, generous enough. Suppose he did not lend to someone because of his love, because of his kindness, he may lose this money in gambling. And what do you think? So this is not gambling. This is just because of his kindness. He wants to help his friend, but his friend is not kind enough to return the money. They took the money and ran away. But that's okay. If we, if we use the money, the money will be done, gone. But if someone using it, the law of cause and effect, the merit is still there. That's why we practice giving. We practice that generosity because we believe that. If we have some extra, we try to give. Give whatever we can to those who are in the real need. And this is our second training. When we are practicing as a Buddhist practitioner, we do not kill, but we try to giving the life to others. We do not steal, but we try to give. We do not lie, but we try to say something true. Instead of drinking, gambling, drugs, alcohol, that means we try to damage our body. Then our practice here is to be mindful on your daily, on our daily consuming. One day our health will be down. But we will not dare to do something to make it down before it's supposed to be down. So the Buddha show us the light of mindfulness on our daily life. We will lose these things one day. But do not try to make it lose earlier than it's supposed to be. Let's say this building will be old and cannot use anymore. But it may last maybe 50 years. But if we do not how, know how to protect this building, this building will last earlier, maybe 20 years. Same with this physical body. We will be old, sick, and die. But with mindfulness, the Buddha taught us to live carefully. We do not damage. We do not try to overprotect, but we know to adjust and live with our moderation. If it's hungry, we need to eat. We do not attach to food, but we know how to keep it in order to survive and continue to do our good work. Sometimes um, young people are not willing to learn a lot because they thought they know enough. And they thought they know more than we do. But you know, learning 
Never waste. Every single thing we, we, if we have mindfulness, we can learn from. One day I um, drive and I stop at the red light. When I see the, the when I saw the, the yellow light, I slow down and I stop at the red and I continue to go when it's green. And I learn a lesson in life. In our daily life, we must have a traffic light. When you learn how to slow down, when you learn how to stop completely, and when you continue to work. Sometimes you don't feel well. You are not sick yet, but not feeling well. That is a yellow light. Take one glass of lemonade with ginger, one hot ginger lemonade, and you will be fine. Continue for the green light. And why we need the traffic lights? To keep safety of everyone. In this life, also the same. Sometimes we need to stop and let order pass. Sometimes order will stop and let us go. If every one of us we try to go, then will be what is happened? Accident, traffic jam. And this is the law of life. Even we have our own life to drive. But sometimes people try to jump in. And if you say, hey, you're wrong, and you try to jump up, an accident will be happening. So if that person is not carefully drive, we stop, let them go. Just one minute, everything will be fine. So where, where is my meditation? On the road, on the street. With mindfulness, we can be able to meditate anywhere. And with mindfulness, we can learn many things in life, even just at the traffic light. Have you ever seen the Buddha have one? Uh, Sometimes you see the portrait of the Buddha. The Buddha standing like this, straight. And one of his hands doing like this, or sometimes he is doing like this. You can call this is the stopping sign. It's good to stop on time. I supposed to have um, a funeral service today at five thirty, uh, five o'clock. Around uh, four ten, somebody call in and say, "Thai, I need. We need you to come to the hospital." because my uncle is not well. And I call one of the brother here and give me a ride there. I said, he tried to a little bit rush, and I say, even if we are rushing, but we, need to, we must be careful, because otherwise it takes more time. If the accident happens, then everything will be stuck. So if we know, if, if we are rushing, but learn to slow down while we rush, we're supposed to know when. So the Buddha reminds us, five things we may lose. Wealth, health, relatives, learning, and morals. If we lose the money, we may refine. Between the money and the relatives, the relationship, and the relationship is more important than money. Between money and health, our health is more important than money. 
Of course, in this life, people used to joke, no money, no talk. <laughs> and sometimes they say, oh, if you have money, you will have everything. That is not true. That is not really true. It's true, but just part. Because even you have a lot of money, but you have no health, money cannot help. So the Buddha said, the most important asset that a person owns, that is health. Because if we have no health, we will have nothing. I have met a lot of uh, wealthy family or people, but they cannot do anything in order to keep them well if they have sickness, especially cancer or something more seriously. Everyday life, we do have relationship between teacher, students, parents, children, brothers, sisters. We have to have relationship. And with mindfulness, the Buddha will taught us how to keep the relationship. Sometimes um, I learned somebody misunderstanding me. And I, I told them that if accidentally I don't know about this matter, then I will be fine. But if I know there is some situation like this and I feel very not, not comfortable, I try to do something to solve the problem. Because I try to live, not to make anyone unhappy about myself. Of course, we just try. We are not saints. We cannot do anything to justify people. But we, we have to try our best. By the way we behave, by the way we talk. Sometimes I'm very busy. And some members come and greeting to me by a bow. And I, because I have, I have to focus to this, and I did not have a chance to respond to them, I feel very uncomfortable. Because I, I afraid that they may think that I ignore them. So I would try all my best to find that person and greeting back to them and try to explain at that moment I see you, I hurt you but I cannot respond because of that uh, time that I must focus to something accidentally I make them mm, misunderstanding about me or not uh, happy about myself then no choice but if we do know somebody is not happy about us, try to solve the problem. Otherwise, the distance between you and that person each day will be more far, and we don't want that to happen. I try to embrace all the brothers, sisters, members together as a family. So when I um, witness many departs daily, and I thought about this sutra that the Buddha taught. We may lose our loved one one day. You hate them, you disagree with them, or you love them dearly one day, one of us have to depart. And remember, life is very fragile. Very fragile. 
we may see that person in the morning. We may hear the news that they gone in the afternoon. When I was in Denver for one of the retreat, just uh, mid of August, after I arrived in Denver and we have dinner together with some monks, the dinner is not yet finished. And we receive a phone call from one of the family that their mother got a stroke and now the, the doctor said she cannot survive. So they call all the family to come in to see her for the last chance. And we just rushing go to the hospital. She is a very healthy lady. Yesterday she still went to the market and buy a lot of food and prepare to cook for her, her children and her husband the next day. And now she is ready to depart. The daughters told me, Thai, I cannot accept it. I cannot accept it because my mother has no signal of health, of unwell. Of course, they're supposed to say that, but deeply inside, they know they're supposed to take it and accept it. Every time when I share you many stories like this, doesn't mean I'm gossiping, <laughs> but I try to share the topics for all of us to reflect, to meditate on. Do you remember I have shared with you about the three kind of pratnyas? Pratnya in words, pratnya in reflecting, and pratnya in attaining. Stories every day, things happen every day, become a very reality article topics for all of us to reflect. And since then, we achieve the fruit of wisdom, the fruits of living, the fruit of the practice, according to what we meditate on, true stories in life. Every day when we, you have a chance to buy newspaper, you will see news at the back. Each family declare, announce their family members pass away. This doesn't mean to make us feel bad, feel sad, but make us live healthily. So we lose money, then use money well. We work so hard to raise money. Why we need to spend for gambling? For alcohol, for drugs. Lose money, lose health, lose family. Just one action we did, we lose few things. We work so hard to have money, then now we lose money easily. We can take like hours to work, but we can lose all of that money just in 10 minutes, an hour. And that is not the way of living. We may lose the relationship, the, the, our loved one, then try to keep the relationship as much as we can. Learn to accept, learn to apologize if we need to. If we do not learn this, we will know nothing. And once we know nothing, and how can we live and practice in a better way? So what is the learning for? To live better.
I already share with you. We live to learn. We learn to live. If we don't learn, we don't know how to live. And if we don't know how to live, then how can we be happy, relax, and learn? The more we learn, the more we live better. So I'm happy every time when I read the teachings of the Buddha. And I, 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 I select many things, many new things in there. And because I select many new things, that's why I have something to share with you weekly. And because you come to share with me weekly, that's why you build up your learning, your knowledge, your understanding weekly. And because you have learned weekly, that's why you update. We clear out our mistakes weekly. Then our life is very shine, very bright, and very clean. It's like the floor. If we take time to sweep the floor once a day, it's not a big job, just very gentle sweep, but the floor never gets dust. But if we leave that for a month, we come back to clean, still clean, but take more time. If we do regularly, easy job. And this is what we're supposed to do. We don't practice 10 minutes meditation. And we say, oh, my mind is still running. I will wait until when I come, then I will sit. <laughs> what is the word waiting? <laughs> we don't do it, how can we come? <laughs> and we wait until we come to practice impossible. We must do that every day, every day. Five, ten minutes. And never misunderstand, never think that uh, sickness only happens to old people. Any kind of age. We can, we, we, uh, we may get sick. So therefore, mindfulness still becomes something very important in our daily life. Mindful on your money. Then you know how to use the money right. Do not spend money on something to make your health more damaged. And that is not a mindful living. We have this healthy body we drink a lot, lose money, lose health, our lifespan shorter. This is what we do, what, is, what are we doing? We cut our life shorter. Smoking, gambling, it's not a sin. But that's just a wrong way to live. Wrong way of consuming. It's not a sin. But if we do not know how to protect this right on time from these small mistakes, it will lead to a major mistakes. For example, if somebody gambling they came to a very big amount of money. When they lose everything, what happened? They become a person who always try to take money from others. They steal it, they become stealer. Because they just want to take money to spend. And if while they taking the money, somebody finding them, catch them, in that you know, very frightened moment, they may kill the person. They become crime. So the Buddha said, we need to protect the sins 
when it's still a very tiny seed. Don't wait until it's become a very big fruit that we try to save it. It's hard. Move it away when it still become a very small seed. It's like some well, you plant an orange tree to a place where you don't want it. Take that tree out, move to some places. If you wait 10 years later, 20 years later, you want to move it, it's hard. So what is the practice here? Transforming our negatives. We all have some attachment. We all have some negatives. But if we do love ourselves, we do love our loved one, then we will try the best to transform our mistakes, our negatives, in order to make us happy and others happy. This is the true way to offer your love. This is the true way to show your, your care, your love, and your improvement. We are not, we never born as a saint. We just a human like the Buddha. So one thing to prove us we're able to do the same is the Buddha was born as a human like us. But the Buddha learned and know how to transform himself. That's why we call him Buddha. We call that man Buddha. Because Buddha means the one who lives with mindfulness. The fully enlightened one. Now we are not fully enlightened yet. We are slowly enlightened. We are partly enlightened. But you know, part better than nothing. Even half, a quarter, still completely just a regular human. And a regular human will live with their hate, greed, and ignorance. But a special person will know, will know how to learn, recognize, I have hate, I have ignorance, I have greed, and I will help myself to transform. This is the point of Buddhism. Buddhism informed we are not born as a saint. We are born as a human. And in our human life, according, along with this, this quiet society, the conditions may cause and may bring us more hate, more greed, more ignorance. We do have the seed of ignorance combined with the conditions, the fruit of ignorance easily arise. I have the, the nature of greed. A lot of things stay in front of me, nobody look after. Then it's a good condition for me to take. And I will think how to, how to take those. And that is a very easy way to make myself become a stealer easily. Become, I can make mistakes easily. So what is the learning here? If we do know we have something to attach, then try not to hang around in that corner, in that area, when the desire arises in us. I have talked to a lot of young friends. They ask me, Thai, how can I transform my passions, my desires? And you know, when you have that, that kind of nature arise. Don't hang around your computer. 
that will bring you to visit a lot of websites or doing something that you may lose your control. You can walk outside, shovel the snow, cut your grass, do some jogging. So try to find a good condition, a better condition to help yourself to calm that, that kind of energy in you. We do have the energy of goodness. We do have the energy of desire, of passions. But the mindfulness on the top shine clearly. I am in a bad mood. I know it. This is the light of mindfulness. Therefore, I will walk outside to enjoy the fresh air rather than stick here around with this person. I may burn myself and I may burn that person too. I want to save the relationship. I want to save the environment of peace in my family. If we do have to do care and do love the family, this is the only way to do it. Practice is not something for the Buddha. Practice is not for our teachers. The practice is for ourselves, our family. So I want you to use a traffic light. When someone in your family turn on the red light, then you're supposed to, you're allowed to go. But if you see the in green light, you must stop. That means I, they, they almost explode. Then try to calm ourselves. Do not continue to talk. Do not continue to do anything because they're in a very angry condition. We need to use the traffic light on physical body, on spiritual too. Sometimes we need to realize all of that in order to make things go smoothly. One day, um, there was a lady who bring his son here and asked his son to bow the Buddha. He doesn't bow it. No matter what his mother told him. She knocked on my door and she said, Thay, can you come out and tell my son to bow the Buddha? I said, no, I won't do that. She said, you are a monk, you're supposed to do that. <laughs> I said, I told her, no, I don't want to get a punch. And I sit down with her and I told her, you cannot blame him. This is something, you know, you, he never did this when he was small. If you ask me to respect someone, you know, totally, completely, someone I do not know, or you, I have to listen to someone I don't know, then it's hard for me to listen. You should understand the situation. And, you know, if he did this regularly at home, then when he come here, he see the Buddha is nothing different at home, and he willing to do it, no question, no doubt. So I just want to inform you one thing. If everything we do regularly, that will become normal. Something we never do it, and we're now we're supposed to do is unknown more. And you cannot blame because this is not what he do every day or every week or regularly. You ask a, a son or a daughter or a kid to sit on the cushion for 30 minutes? No way. Unless he come here to sit with you. Even us, at the very first time we come here, the first 30 minutes on our first day is like a whole year. 
But we come to sit for 30 minutes regularly, then now hour or one hour and a half is... Sometimes we're still hurting, but it's not bad as the first day we come. Something we do not do regularly, then it's not the practice. Try to do it regularly. We breathe every single breath. Huh? Practicing is like our breath, never stop. If we stop breathing, we die. We stop practice, we suffer. We can stop eating for a few days, no problem. We can stop drinking, but we cannot stop breathing. Between food and drink, drinking is more important than the food. But between drinking and breathing, breathing is the most important. And we use the example, breathing is like the practice. Never stop breathing. Practice. If we stop practice, many things will happen. Because this is the nature of life. The nature of life is problems. <laughs> Nothing we do without problems. Is that correct? But if we do not have the practice, we don't know how to calm the problem, how, do not know how to solve the problem. Practice is like the breathing. Breathing is like the practice. We stop breathing, we die. We stop practice, we suffer. So, all together, the Buddha want to inform us, to remind us. No matter how much we raise, every day, one day we may lose money. So, because we will lose it, that's why we need to mindful to use the money. Learn how to use. Using money well. Skillfully using the money. We will lose our health. So try to treat ourselves good. We will lose our relatives. Keep the relationship. Protect the relationship. We may lose learning. So do not lose the learning. Keep learning. Keep practice. Once we have the practice, the morals flourish every day. You know, even we are walking on the street, we are riding our bike, or we are driving our car, none of us that cannot follow the rules. If you are the one who walk on the street, you must also follow the rule as a walker. You must follow the rule when you are riding your bicycle. You know which lane is yours. And if you are driving a car, a vehicle, you must learn all of the rules. So, bicycle, a car, a walk, a motorcycle. Those are all something for us to use to arrive to the destination. Then we must learn all the rules of using, depends on what we use, in order to keep the society safe. Same thing. We have money, we have relative, we have health, we have learning, we have morals. These are all five things we're supposed to have. Then try to keep everything circulate good. Thank you for your listening. I hope you enjoy your weekend. Before we um, 
we dismiss. I just want to inform that uh, there will be a mindfulness day on uh, the um, 23rd, and uh, is that right? Friday and Saturday of September 20, um, 25, 20, 20, 25 and 26 in Westlock. Before we uh, have winter, I hope the Sangha can make your time stay in Westlock at least one night. Okay, Friday night. We'll have a half, like a Friday night of meditation there and a full day of Saturday. We're supposed to have three days retreat until Sunday. But um, I am unable to be uh, the, the young monks will have the schedule with the Sangha. So please, um, I really hope that you can make your time and be in Westlock uh, during uh, this uh, autumn so you can enjoy the fresh air and uh, the quiet time to practice there in Westlock. So September 25 and 26, there will be an email to send out. I just want to announce ahead of time so you get ready for. Thank you.